It feels like English football is a real hotbed of young talent at this moment in time, with the England team alone seemingly able to name a full starting 11 of excellent right backs or number 10s all under the age of 25. Not that you would want to, of course, that would be an incredibly dysfunctional team, and that is to say nothing of the myriad of fantastic young foreign players in the division as well. Watching Southampton's 18-year-old right-back Valentino Livramento, who may well have turned 19 by the time this video comes out, putting in a stellar performance against, I think it was Manchester United, at the start of this season, gave me the idea for today's video. Essentially, I have attempted to rank the youngest player to have registered a Premier League appearance at all 20 Premier League clubs this season based on current ability, so not on form or future potential. Obviously, with most of them being teenagers or in their very early 20s, some of them haven't played very much first-team football. That is why I waited a few weeks to make the video, trying to watch every player and get a better understanding of their talents, even if that meant dipping into the youth team game. The number of minutes or games played in the Premier League alone will not count for or against a player, but obviously, you can't give the same weight to a player's performances at youth team level compared to the real thing. Hopefully that is all straightforward enough, and hopefully there won't be as many arguments in the comments as there were between my friends on our group chat when I asked them who they thought should take top spot. Here is how I would rank every Premier League team's youngest player, from least to most brilliant, based upon their ability right now. 20th, Crystal Palace, Jesser and Raksaki. The fifth youngest player to appear in the Premier League this season, Jesser and Raksaki was only 18 when he made his Premier League debut in August, though he has since turned 19. Released by Chelsea at the age of 16 because he was too small, Raksaki subsequently had unsuccessful trials at Sheffield United, Watford and Brighton, before being offered a deal at Palace. Last season, he started off playing for the under-18s before stepping up to the under-23s and eventually being asked to join in training with the first team. Fast, versatile and good on the ball, coaches at Palace are keen to improve the youngster's physical attributes and some of his defensive work, but there are high hopes over his future at Selhurst Park. Raksaki has made just one Premier League appearance for Crystal Palace to date, coming on as a 76-minute substitute in a 3-0 defeat to Chelsea. He gets us started simply because I don't think he's quite ready for the rigours of Premier League football just yet, and I do think he would likely benefit from a tough League One or Championship loan spell before returning to the club. 19th, Everton, Lewis Dobbin. Even younger than Jesser and Raksaki, 18-year-old Toffee Lewis Dobbin was born before Wayne Rooney made his Everton debut, which makes me feel about 800 years old. Like Rooney, Dobbin is a forward, a star for England at multiple youth team levels, and he has spent more than six years coming through the academy system at Everton. A two-footed frontman who can play out wide, but looks like a natural central striker from what I have seen of him, Dobbin was Everton's 2019-20 under-18 player of the season, following 11 goals in 16 league games for the team. He spent last season playing with the under-23s, but this season he has registered two Premier League appearances. It must be said that both were injury time substitutions and Dobbin has played a grand total of just two minutes of Premier League football. He's another player who I think would benefit from a spell on loan somewhere because I can't see him starting many games ahead of Dominic Calvert-Lewin or Solomon Rondon just yet. 18th, Brentford, Mads Bidstrup. One of only a tiny number of players in this list, not to have come through the club in question's own academy, Mads Bidstrup, joined Brentford's B-team from RB Leipzig after signing a pre-contract agreement with the Bees in 2020 for a fee of somewhere between £800 and £900,000. Part of a large Scandinavian and particularly a young Danish contingent at the Brentford Community Stadium, Bidstrup was sought after by some of the biggest clubs in Europe before he joined Leipzig. Laid back off the pitch, but industrious on it, Bidstrup is a tireless but technical midfield operator who has made three substitute appearances in the Premier League this season. The longest and most impressive came in Brentford's 2-0 defeat to Arsenal as Bidstrup played 10 minutes of football and had a 100% pass success rate. Sharp and energetic, Bidstrup will get minutes this season while Shandon Baptiste is injured and if other players are suspended and I suspect he will cement a starting berth at the club within a couple of years' time. 17th, Aston Villa, Carney Chukwuemeka. 
The youngest player to have featured in the Premier League this season, Carney Chukwameka, is someone who Aston Villa are extremely excited about, and with good reason. Eligible to represent England, Austria, or Nigeria, it is England that Chukwameka represents, a youth team level at this moment in time, currently starring for the under-19s. A tall, athletic, central, or attacking midfielder, Chukwameka is creative and brilliant on the ball. He looked like a man playing against boys in Aston Villa's youth teams, attracting the attention of Manchester United and Bayern Munich. Now he has made three Premier League appearances for Villa, two last season and one so far this season, and he is the first player in this list to have started a Premier League game. Chuck Wameka started in Villa's one-all draw with Brentford in August, and you would have to say that he is unfortunate not to have featured since then on the evidence of that display. With the right attitude and luck, he will be a star. And if this list were based on potential rather than current ability, he would be close to the top of it. 16th, Brighton and Hove Albion, Taylor Richards. The potential in this list is terrifying, and that is very well indicated by the fact that Brighton prospect Taylor Richards only comes in 16th. Whilst I've said that a number of our early inclusions could benefit from a loan move, Taylor Richards is someone who has already had one and is testament to their usefulness. Richards began his footballing education at Fulham, followed by four years at Man City, before he joined Brighton in 2019. A skillful and silky left-footed number 10, who can also be deputised out wide, there is a touch of Mesut Ozil about the way in which Richards plays the game. He spent last season on loan at Doncaster Rovers, where he was fantastic, scoring 10 goals and making 5 assists, and I wouldn't have minded Hull City putting in a cheeky loan bid over the summer. Richards chose to stay at Brighton, where he has played 17 minutes of Premier League football this season, as well as starting a couple of games in the EFL Cup. 15th, Leeds United, Charlie Creswell. A man who was recently called up for England under-21 duty for the first time, which will be his first involvement in the England setup at any age group, Charlie Creswell's speedy rise at Leeds United has clearly caught Lee Carsley's eye. A towering centre-back, who could still have room to grow, age 19, Creswell was born in Preston, but grew up in York. There are a number of talented young players at Leeds United right now, not least Joe Gelhard, who is just a little older than Creswell, and would likely have featured even higher. Creswell has all the tools to become a top-class modern-day centre-back. Tall, physical, robust in the tackle, and comfortable on the ball. He made his debut at Leeds in an EFL Cup defeat to Hull City last season, and he has made two Premier League appearances so far this term, including a full 90 minutes at home to West Ham. 14th, Norwich City, Andrew Omabamadile. A man who will have been disappointed to see Daniel Farker depart from Norwich City, Andrew Omabamadile has played more Premier League football this season than any of our previous inclusions with three starts and one substitute appearance to his name so far this term. Half Irish and half Nigerian, Omar Medile was born in County Kildare, but he moved to England to join Norwich in 2019. Another big centre-back who is comfortable with the ball at his feet, Omar Medile's emergence is somewhat reminiscent of Ben Godfrey's during Norwich's last season in the top flight, inasmuch as the fact that he looks to be a real gem within a squad that seems destined to be relegated. If or when the Canaries do go down, and let's face it, it's probably when, there is likely to be a handful of clubs fighting it out for Omabama Dile's signature, especially if he is able to continue in pressing, aged only 19, under Daniel Farker's successor. 13. Wolves, Fabio Silva. Although Fabio Silva made a whopping 32 Premier League appearances last season, and 37 in all competitions, he is still the sixth youngest player to have registered an appearance in the Premier League this season. I like Silva a lot, and not just because some of you say that he looks like me, which he doesn't, but it would be impossible to deny that he has had some teething problems adjusting to life in England. That is, of little surprise, given his age, and there ought to be less pressure on him this season with Raul Jimenez back in the mix, even if that does mean that he plays a bit less football. In terms of his strength and aggression, there is certainly room for improvement, but I like Silva's movement and there is still no reason why he can't become a genuinely superb centre forward. 12th, Watford, Joao Pedro. 
Mentioned very recently on this channel, in a video looking at Premier League bench warmers, as I said then, Joao Pedro is someone who I expected to play a bigger role at Watford than he has done so far this season. Whilst not the most prolific in the Championship last season, nor were Watford in general, and Pedro did show some nice touches and further evidence of why he was labelled as a wonder kid during his time at Fluminense. Pedro came to England and the Premier League extremely young when he probably could have done with another couple of years in Brazil, if not more, but I certainly wouldn't write him off just yet. Pedro only just turned 20 and there are signs that Claudio Ranieri trusts him. Given the fact that he is big, mobile and good on the ball, it's easy to see how Pedro could become a real asset to Watford if, or when, things start to click. 11th, Leicester City, Luke Thomas. Leicester City have recently invested heavily in their academy coaching and infrastructure, and it is easy to see why, given the results their prior investment has yielded. Ben Chilwell is the most lucrative sale from the Fox's own youth ranks, having pocketed the club £45 million upon his departure to Chelsea. And now, another homegrown left-back is following in his footsteps. Luke Thomas is now in his third season playing in the Leicester City first team, but aged only 20, he remains their youngest Premier League player so far this season. Thomas made 14 Premier League appearances last season, and 20 in all competitions, given more first team opportunities than he might have expected following a crucial ligament injury to James Justin. This season, the Foxes have added Ryan Bertrand in terms of depth at left back, but both Bertrand and Thomas have started four games in the Premier League so far this term. 10th, Burnley, Nathan Collins. Kicking off the countdown of our top 10, Nathan Collins probably isn't an all too familiar face to non Burnley, Stoke, and Republic of Ireland fans, but I suspect that won't remain the case for too long. Outstanding at Stoke City in the 18 months preceding his move to Burnley, Sean Dyche is a man who has always had a sharp eye for centre-backs, and it wouldn't surprise me if Nathan Collins became his shrewdest addition of the lot. That is some claim, given the fact that Dyche has also signed the likes of James Tarkovsky and Michael Keane, but I think Collins could become that good. An old-school centre-back who isn't afraid to put his head in where it hurts, Collins is brave, physically imposing, and he never shirks a challenge. He has made three Premier League appearances so far this season, and whilst he is far from the finished article just yet, he's good value for a spot in 10th. Ninth, Newcastle United, Joe Willock. A man who went on a Lionel Messi-esque run of goal-scoring form towards the back end of last season, prompting one or two calls for him to be included in Gareth Southgate's Euro 2020 squad, Joe Willock has been brought back down to earth with a bit of a bang this season at Newcastle United. Newcastle's only summer signing to command a transfer fee, Willock arrived at St. James's Park on a permanent basis for a fee of £25 million. Aged 22, he is the oldest player in today's video, which might say something about the decline in standards of Newcastle United's academy over the last one or two decades. Willock is a talent, as he proved during his rich vein of form last season, even if he is yet to record a goal or an assist so far this term. A willing runner both on and off the ball, Willock has bags of pace, he's good on the ball, and there is no reason why he shouldn't be able to hit double figures from midfield every season. 8th, Manchester City, Cole Palmer. The youngest player to appear for Man City in the Premier League this season, I think Cole Palmer has probably played the least amount of Premier League football of anyone in the top half of this list. No doubt that counts against him a little in terms of what we have to go on, but in the youth team game, there have been few who have made as big an impression in recent years. Palmer played two games in a single day last month, one for Manchester City's first team and one for the under-23s, scoring a hat-trick for the latter. A star man since breaking into the England under-21 setup, aged only 19, Palmer can play in central midfield, attacking midfield, out wide on the right, or even as a false nine. Quick, direct, and brilliant on the ball, Palmer is a great exponent of the be brave mantra that Pep Guardiola seeks to implement throughout the club, and for that reason, more first team opportunities under Pep are likely to be forthcoming. 7th, Southampton, Valentino Livramento. One of the teenage stars of the 2021 22 Premier League season so far, and I don't just mean the 2021 22 fantasy Premier League season, the fact that Chelsea have Reese James at right back and have sold both Tarek Lamptey and Tino Livramento over the last couple of years, 
all of whom are aged between 19 and 21, suggests that there is some kind of magic right-back juice that they're putting in the water at Cotham. Southampton signed Livramento over the summer for just £5 million, though the buyback clause for an undisclosed fee that Chelsea have inserted into the deal suggests that they didn't want to go without some kind of contingency plan. It is easy to understand why, given Livramento's start to life on the south coast. Quick, adventurous, and a brilliant cross of the ball, Livramento has started 11 Premier League games for the Saints this season, and it doesn't seem likely to give up his starting berth anytime soon. England have an outrageous abundance of particularly young right-backs, but I wouldn't rule out Livramento winning a cap over the next few years, or even becoming the three lines' first choice there one day. Sixth, West Ham, Ben Johnson. Given Vladimir Sufal's importance to West Ham United since signing for the Hammers, you could be forgiven for thinking that an injury to the Czech would come as a devastating blow to David Moyes' side. However, West Ham have won all five games that 21-year-old academy graduate Ben Johnson has stepped up to replace Sue Fallon. It is a remarkable breakthrough for a young man who always seems to be smiling and has plenty of reasons to be cheerful right now. A natural right-back who can cover at left-back as he is fairly two-footed, Johnson is a real grafter, which bodes well in this current West Ham team. He was the Hammers Young Player of the Year last season, but he has looked even more assured so far this term. So whilst I think Tino Livramento will ultimately become a better right-back right now, Johnson, who is three years his senior, sneaks in just ahead of him. Fifth, Tottenham Hotspur, Brian Hill. It would be fair to say that Brian Hill has enjoyed a slow start to life at Tottenham. But then again, Tottenham have enjoyed a slow start to the season. So slow, in fact, that it cost Nuno Espirito Santo his job, and it remains to be seen whether Antonio Conte will find more room to accommodate the club's most expensive summer signing. Brian Hill was brought to Tottenham for £21.6 million, plus Eric Lamella, over the summer, off the back of a breakout season on loan at Ibar. Hill is someone who can operate in any of the three roles behind a centre-forward, with his acceleration, flair, and willingness to attempt the spectacular, making him something of a throwback within the modern game, where such extravagances are often coached out of young players. Hill has only played 57 minutes of Premier League football this season, in the form of five substitute appearances. So, if we were going on form, he wouldn't touch the top half. On ability, he still takes fifth but he will have to impress Antonio Conte early on and show his commitment to the cause if he is to avoid his career stalling early on in North London. Fourth, Liverpool, Harvey Elliott. It's never nice to see a footballer pick up a really awful injury, of course, but it is particularly upsetting when it happens to such a young and promising prospect like Harvey Elliott. I thought Elliott was absolutely outstanding during the early part of the season and it was evident that Jurgen Klopp fully trusted him to start games for Liverpool, even when it mattered most. That is high praise for an 18-year-old who became the youngest player of the Premier League era over two years ago, when he made two Premier League appearances for Fulham before arriving at Anfield. Clever, gifted, and incredibly hardworking, I thought Elliot would most likely sneak into England's next World Cup squad before he suffered that horrible ankle fracture slash dislocation, which has obviously set back his progress. Thankfully, his operation is said to have been an enormous success, and he is now back in individual training. Third, Chelsea, Callum Hudson-Odoi. A player who I've been championing, along with Jadon Sancho and Phil Foden, since I started this channel in the summer of 2017, off the back of their form for England's under-17s, whilst Foden and Sancho quite quickly became obvious future superstars within the first-team game, it has taken Callum Hudson-Odoi just that little bit longer. Of course, that was partly due to a long-term Achilles injury, but also because of competition for places out wide in both the Chelsea and England teams. Chelsea repeatedly rebuffed big money offers from Bayern Munich, whilst Hudson-Odoi wasn't playing much first-team football, well aware of his enormous potential. It looks as though the wide man, who just turned 21, is starting to stamp down some authority in the Chelsea team now, under Thomas Tuchel, even if that means deputising out of position as a wing-back at times. I just think he has got so much about him, in terms of his running both on and off the ball, how two-footed he is, and his movement and his spot in third was never really in too much doubt. Second, Manchester United, 
Mason Greenwood. It was the battle for top spot that caused rather a significant rift between two of my friends on our WhatsApp group, and I will cover why I put Mason Greenwood in second place when we come to the man up next. Firstly though, we must discuss Mason Greenwood. When Manchester United signed Cristiano Ronaldo, I must admit that I came down on the side of not being fully convinced that it would benefit the club's talented young forward line in the long term. In Jadon Sancho, Marcus Rashford and Mason Greenwood, I think it is pretty much inarguable that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer already had three of the best young forwards in all of world football, with Eddington Cavani there to add some steel, experience and precision when required. Ronaldo is essentially just a much better Cavani, but you get the impression that his arrival has detracted from the development of Sancho, Rashford and Greenwood more so than it has aided it. I don't doubt that Mason Greenwood will still have a fabulous career. He is simply too deadly with either foot for that not to be the case, barring any disastrous injuries or career decisions. Greenwood has four goals in 10 games in the Premier League this season off the back of a strong start to the campaign. A solid case could be made, I think, for him having the most potential of anyone in this video, but on current ability, he is very narrowly beaten by the man up next. First, Arsenal. Bakayo Saka. Taking top spot just ahead of Mason Greenwood is Arsenal's youngest Premier League player this season, a certain Bakayo Saka. A little bit overlooked during the early parts of this season due to the emergence and fine form of Emil Smith-Rowe, Saka has also been pivotal to Arsenal's resurgence following what was, quite frankly, a pretty disastrous start. Saka's talents come as less of a surprise now into his fourth season playing Premier League football. With 70 league appearances for Arsenal and over 100 appearances in all competitions for the club under his belt, having only recently turned 20. That in of itself is a remarkable achievement, but Saka also won Arsenal's Player of the Season award last season and forced his way into England's starting 11 as the three lines reached the final of Euro 2020. I think it is very possible, if not highly probable, that Mason Greenwood will reach a higher level of peak ability and performance than Bakayo Saka. But in the here and now, I think he is a more consistent and dependable player and the best to be his club's youngest in the Premier League this season. He is also extremely likeable, but I don't think that clouded my judgment too much. So that is it for today's video, but thank you all sincerely very much as ever for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If that was the case, feel free to hit the like button. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments and make sure you're subscribed and have notifications turned on for HITC7s. Also, you can follow me on Twitter or Instagram via the username at HITC7s if that sounds like something that, you know, might be of interest.